Hi, 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 hi. Morning, y'all. More editing today. Big mm. trip next week. Trying to get everything ready for that. So yesterday's question about the head size shrink. The majority of people don't really mind. They obviously a lot of trust for ping, which is good. A few people saying they might see some extra club head speed. Some people saying the company's got nowhere to go, so they're going that way. But predominantly it was like, well, if it helps, it helps, you know? So today's question. <laughs> so how much does your mental state affect your golf game there you go that's an interesting one i like this question as someone who used to struggle as a junior getting very frustrated with golf and then conquered it with a little tip which i'll tell you tomorrow maybe and then obviously we've got the tennis on at the minute we've got mac and Row commentating famous for losing it so how does your mental state affect your golf good or bad affect your game comments down there hit the thumbs up button down there and all I'll tell you what button you definitely should hit as well. The subscribe button. She's right. So today's daily vlog swing. I can't really see what's going on with the club with this swing because obviously the blur but I've chosen it because there's a common movement that I see with golfers here that I'd like to talk about and it's kind of this sat back follow through that we see here and the reluctance to get maybe the middle part coming through which we'll talk about also what happens with these kind of swings you see the back swings relatively restricted let's pretend this player can kind of find direction to some standard but then struggles with strike which is often common with this movement even if this player can't um, you've got to get them striking it to a certain extent before you can then start looking at face to path pass as well um, which often body movements can help with people let's show you what I mean alright bro alright it's one of those calls is it it is, yeah. <laughs> Just air in my back. Right, first thing I want you to do, we're going to get up against a wall, I'm going to use my fence and I've just got a golf club in my hand as well. I'm going to try and identify the way you turn, so I'm going to put the club across my chest. Butt end of the club, inside left arm, rest of the club, outside of right arm. Now stood up against this fence, I'm literally an inch away from it, I'm going to make my turn on my backswing where I feel I get the club to go parallel with the fence. If you think of the way you're turning, you're kind of here. So not very rotated and pulling a long way away from the fence. So I'm going to feel from here, I just move this club to go parallel with the fence. That's going to feel like a bigger shoulder turn for you. It's going to feel like you're turning over the ball more as well, not running behind it so much. Then on the follow through. So from your follow through position, you'd be kind of here. What I want you to try and do is get the head of the club up against the fence. Now to do this, I'm having to really extend in my lower back, bum, waist, pushing forward, upper body stays back. The other thing I want you to do as you do this is make sure the head of the club is quite low on the fence. So I don't want you just to come through and have the, fence, the club hitting the fence up high. This is really going to show you how you want to turn your body in a way that might help you reach the ball a bit more. To encourage a few better strikes, a bit more consistency of ball, face, contact, which hopefully will get some consistency in the shape shots you hit. Let's answer your questions. Hey Mark, greetings from Ireland. I recently had irons fitted for me. They're working out okay, but on the same day I got fitted for the irons, I tried out the driver. There's a big difference with the driver, like 25 yards carry. It's, but since I've tried it on my own course, and I see the same differences. The only thing is that the driver is an inch shorter as standard than my own driver. And I found that when I hit a bad shot, it was really out of the toe. Could this be caused by the length difference? Or is it just strike? It's, it's not possible to try the driver in the length that I want without kind of purchasing it. So um, I'm not sure what to do. Any help would be great. Cheers. Okay, good question. I get this a lot from people who've had a fit who think that maybe they've got the answer. A few things. Having a fit isn't going to make you better it's going to give you tools to allow you maybe to become better but you still have to do all the work the shorter club to you now hitting it out of the toe might be the cause but you should be able to still hit that club out of the middle it'll be something in your technique that will be causing that to that toe strike and it might be that the drivers feels too short so basically there's an adjustment process 
Not being able to try the driver in that length, while surely just holding down the handle in some respects, would allow you to see at that point of testing if that length of driver is strikeable for you. Obviously the weights will change a fraction, but it's like minuscule, so if you're that fragile, then it's not the club, it's the fact that you're that fragile. And when it comes to the 25 yards further, obviously I don't know any of the basics of what you did in your fit, how it was worked, those kind of things, but Hopefully you can see from my videos, this is why I do on-course testing. I would be pushing really hard if I was looking at getting a club to try and have a go of it on the course or even just to confirm in the drival situation that those numbers are what they seem to be. Now look, I'm not suggesting they did this, but I see data read poorly a lot. Two Healy strikes with your gaming club, two high toe, long, low spin balls, and the other three equivalents with the club that you're looking at buying, it's gonna show that club up as going further. It's not going further, it's very strike dependent. So for me personally, unless your club was really poorly fit originally, 25 yards doesn't come from nowhere. Tech hasn't moved on that much in the time between your old one and new one, if your new one is current and like I say, fit. So definitely, just get, if you can get them to give you a chance of getting it out on the course, always make a massive difference and trying to stop these confusions. Right, next idea to try and get you moving a bit more and figure out your range of movement also. Great for indoors, you can do it at the range as well before you hit. No club needed, just take an imaginary posture like you've got an imaginary club in your hand. So it's actually a real posture, but imagine there's a club in your hand. And what I want you to do is I want you to try and get your right arm turning up behind your left. So if you imagine your turn would be about here, I want you to try and turn your body so your right arm goes straight up behind your left. So you're lining them up, aeroplane styly. So left hand stays down, right hand turns up, get them lining up. Again, you'll feel that you're less this way and for you much more rotated. Then the same on the way through. So you could just come down, touch that one, Get this one lining up, lift your head up to imagine where the ball's gone, try not to stay down, but this will help you with side bends, to so side bends and rotations. For you, you're gonna be more here, kind of back here. It's just about getting them lined up. It really make you feel how much you can and can't turn. Obviously do it within your range of movement, but it's always good as well to just kind of push your range of movement a fraction to see how far you can move and how different it will feel compared to your lesser turns and shifts of pressures. I love doing this with students because it really does show me and them the capabilities they've actually got when you just take the club out of their hands. Um, coach. Hello. Right, bro. All clothed up. Yeah. Well done. How's back. The back. Back's not getting as much air at the moment. <laughs> See you later, Murray. Right, so the last idea I would do with lots of students. Here's a Milo student. That's an all student. Make a swing, please, Milo. So Milo tends to hang back, doesn't get off this foot, doesn't move forward that well. So what I want you to do, Milo, is the step through. Full swing, full speed, step through. Perfect. So Orla does often come through, but she uses the step through. So Orla, can you do the step through? Give it a go, swing it, like you do at the range. Boom, yeah! So that step through, like you might have saw Podrick Harrington doing in the Irish, gives people the idea of what it feels like to hit the ball with the pressure going forward, see how the lofts might change, see how the path might change, because it might move low point. It's a great way just to show how hanging back can cause one strike pattern, idea, feel, and then pushing your pressures through can create a very different pattern of shots and what have you and it's about monitoring if those shots get better great way to practice at the range step through for a couple then hit your normal shots step through for a couple then hit your normal shots or well, if you're Podrick Harrington just do it in a tournament there we go that's my Wednesday thanks for watching let me know your thoughts on today's question, how do the emotions that you deal with as you play golf affect your game? Hit that comment section up down below, also thumbs up and subscribe as always. Hopefully some of those swing ideas as well will help you move your pressure through and see different patterns and shots if you see that hit again. Comments up down below, let me know if it's helping or not. We'll see you all tomorrow.